Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Klein. I'm the Senior Director of Learning Partnerships at Northern Illinois University, and I get to help facilitate the Illinois P20 Network, along with... Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Doerr, and I'm the Director of Educator Leadership and Partnerships with the Illinois P20 Network, and I'm glad to be here. So today we're here to talk to you a little bit about KEEP Illinois. And KEEP Illinois, uh, the KEEP is all capitals. It stands for Keeping Educators Engaged Professionally, uh, has the goal of teacher retention as kind of our floor, and then teacher growth and creating an environment where not only teachers, but all educators can flourish and um, continuously improve throughout their careers. And so with that lofty target as the goal for this group, uh, we now have educators, uh, teachers, administrators, counselors, retirees from literally one end of the state to the other who've uh, signed up to be a part of this grassroots effort that is Keep Illinois. And over the uh, first year plus of Keep Illinois' existence, there's been a number of really profound conversations and ultimately those led toward centering the work on research and uh, we've recently released a report that we're going to kick it over to Tim. He's going to tell you about the highlights of this report. You can read the whole thing on our website. And then when when Tim is done telling you about the report, we're going to share what our next steps are. So we're excited to talk about this report just briefly. We obviously can't go into great details here, but we want to give you an overview of what we found in doing this study uh, because we think it's really going to be a useful base for the field to be able to do work uh, going forward. So this is called the road to retention, understanding the educator shortage and ways to keep educators. And this was a study that we did of over 70 sources, looking at the problems that are facing uh, all of us in schools related to both teacher and administrator uh, retention. And we looked at what was maybe forcing some of them to feel like they needed to leave the profession. But we also looked at what was keeping people in the profession, what was really energizing them and helping them stay. Uh, and through that, not only did we get to some of the research reasons for this happening, we also looked a little bit at some solutions. And this was something that we looked at not only in the state of Illinois, but we looked across the country for uh, examples. So the place that we want to start, of course, is taking a look at what we've learned from the research about the crisis. And the fact is there is an educator crisis. This is a crisis. Again, we've seen issues over the years of uh, retention. That certainly is not a new problem. But what we are seeing are, is some new research that really points to how bad it is right now. This is the lowest retention levels we've seen in 50 years uh, in our schools, again, both about teachers and principals. There's a nationwide shortage. Uh, again, we've seen shortages in geographic areas before and in certain content areas, but now we're seeing it across the country and in lots of different places. We know that 23% of teachers left their role or school in 22-23. And in Illinois, the Illinois State Board of Ed reported over 4,000 unfilled teaching positions in 23-24. And we also know that this is a, not a problem just with teachers. We know that we have a lot of administrators who are also thinking about leaving. And in fact, 42% of principals and 46% of superintendents reported last year that they were planning to leave. So there is a crisis, there's a problem, and now we have to ask the important question, why? We, again, dug into the research to see what's already, and there's a lot of wonderful research that's been done for decades on uh, this issue. We found that some of the top reasons why teachers or administrators choose to leave the profession uh, Certainly, compensation continues to be an issue. In 2022, teachers made on average 26.4% less than other professionals. This makes the field uh, very unattractive for some people to go into, young people and, and new people to the profession to enter. Uh, it also makes it easier for some of those teachers or administrators to leave for higher paying professions. 
Uh, the other area, one of the other areas that came up that was related to compensation is work hours. Uh, interestingly, teachers work more hours per week, uh, around 53, than other working adults who might work 46 hours. We also know that teachers work up to four hours per week without any pay. So when we connect their pay with their hours, we're seeing uh, much less uh, 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 you know, less than what other people are being paid. Uh, so these are two issues that clearly still continue to be a problem and, and uh, something for us to look into. Uh, we saw teachers who mentioned and administrators said they that educators don't feel very respected either within the profession or outside the profession, uh, that there were feelings that there wasn't enough autonomy and decision-making authority for, uh, for me to do my job well. Uh, mental health is really a big issue that came out in the research. Uh, we found that uh, in the 2022 Gallup poll that's been done for years and years and years, teachers have the highest burnout rate among all professions. Uh, teachers also noted that they identify the challenges of caring for students with mental illnesses as a stressor. So not only are they dealing with their own stress and the issues that that you know we all have in our lives and, and in schools, specifically when we're working with a group of people like we are with kids who are also struggling with mental health that's an added pressure and one that that people noted that was a reason why they were leaving the profession um and then you know certainly we see this both in administrators and in teachers uh, feelings of isolation sometimes we can find ourselves very separated from our colleagues and this was something that was seen as a problem and then also not enough access to high quality professional learning that this was something that was turning people off that was driving them away uh, and if there was a way to offer better professional learning it would help us stay and in fact uh, one of the things we found in the research is that high quality professional learning leads to increased retention more so than higher salaries especially with teachers of color so all teachers but especially teachers of color said you know the high quality professional learning is what really could help me and i'm not getting that so then again, we said we also look at why people stay, and that's, I think, really, really important. And not only stay, but what helps them feel great about the work that they're doing day in and day out. So again, compensation and work hours are important in this regard. Uh, certainly, uh, we've seen states who have invested in bonuses, pay increases, lowering retirement age, uh, tuition reimbursement, loan forgiveness, uh, paying student teachers, all these things provide compensation support for teachers to stay in the profession. We also found that teacher leadership, this, this, this a sort of chance for me as a teacher to not only teach my students and my classes, but also be invested, involved in the leadership of the school, of doing work in the community, of serving as an instructional coach to help my colleagues all of that helps people feel more invested in their profession and want to stay and actually makes them happier. Uh, and then we talked already about the importance of professional learning and coaching and collaboration. Uh, there's there's no question that this is in the uh, the research, specifically this idea of being coached. Uh, if I'm a new teacher where I might be mentored, if I'm an experienced teacher where I get supported by my colleagues in a non-evaluative way, those things really help me feel better about my 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 role as a as a teacher or as a principal or administrator because they need coaches as well uh, and then finally certainly working conditions school climate all of these things uh, culture and climate wellness these are issues that are at the center right now of where ed educators are about what really helps them stay and, and not only stay in the profession but stay in their school for a long period of time which of course is better than uh, rapid turnover, uh, more time for uh, teachers to do the work that they want to do, to develop that positive school climate and school culture, removing administrative tasks, acknowledging the time that grading and preparation take uh, is something that they noted, and uh, looking for ways for us to really uh, focus on wellness and reduce the burnout that we find in this profession. So we have lots of good evidence now uh, and really good research that's been done for decades about why people stay, why people leave this great profession. And now we want to start thinking about 
what can we learn from this and what can we do? And that takes us to, you know, what our next steps are. So let's talk about those next steps. I, we're probably not going to talk about long-term next steps because as you're going to hear, uh, the short and medium-term next steps are, are probably a little more clear, but even there, uh, we're going to need a lot more input. So Tim, can you tell us about those short and medium-term uh, next steps here? Sure. So we're really excited to be releasing this report. We're making it available widely on our website uh, to, for anyone to, to access uh, along with this video and uh, some survey work we're going to do to follow up to get feedback from the field in terms of what would be those items that we think we want to try to address. And in some cases, they might be very big issues. Uh, some of those, those issues that we're sometimes afraid to get into, but we know that they could have a big impact on this on this retention problem. Uh, but there's also lots of little things we could do. And the way we're hoping we're going to come up with some solutions that are going to be local, what you can do in your school, what can you do in your district that could be uh, changes that would be positive, what could we do in the state, and there could be some state policy levers that we could take a look at. And I think we're also going to be looking at larger national issues, especially as we look at what other states are doing, uh, what are some ways we can do that, use those ideas to make change here in Illinois. So as we said earlier, at this point, we're shifting from the research to action. Some of that action may be additional data collections, uh, as, Tim, as Tim has mentioned. Um, and really what we need to do right now in the very, very short term, as Tim just said, this, this initial surveying is gonna be to help prioritize those responses um, to help prevent people from leaving and help to encourage people to not only stay, but really want to stay, um, because we probably can't move on all of those things all at the same time. And sure. so that's where we're gonna look to the field to help determine which we're moving on first and, and which we're gonna maybe wait a little longer to come back to. Tim, anything else to add? You know, I think this is this feels like we are are building a really strong foundation. One of the things we heard from a lot of people in the last uh, 12 months as we've started this work was, you know, start with the science, start with the research, start with what we know, and then build some really smart action steps that we can do next. And that's what I think uh, the coming months are going to see is uh, are identifying those action steps and then putting them into practice. So it's very exciting to see where we're going to be in the coming 12 months. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching this. And uh, if you want to learn more, visit the Keep Illinois link in the in the description down below, as well as on our website.